Hello you beautiful lot and welcome to today's wonderful video. Now it's been a year since I started doing the channel and there's been memories coming up through Facebook of certain videos that I've done in the previous year. And of course one that's flashed up quite recently has been Furnace Lane of Finden, where you used to have the Glendon Ironworks. So all the ironstone from all the area up in Finden was brought down to a little area where they could smelt it and turn that iron into some good metal in there. So, um, <laughs> there was a quite a few bits that I've learned since then. And well, it's about time I redid the video. So in honour of Memories of Find and Facebook group, the wonderful Susan Waters and Cheryl Harris, beautiful Facebook group, go check it out. Keep an eye on their posts because they will let you know of everything that is actually been and gone in Finden. And of course, to tie in with them as well, I want to give another big thanks to the Finden Historical Society for providing some of the pictures. I would love to leave a few names at the end, but to try and remember <laughs> who give what is quite a mission. So please excuse me, but I love you all. So let's start here. This is Furnace Lane. These were the houses that used to occupy the people that would run the furnaces down here. And of course, it, I think it was 1998, right? There was going to be the Isham Bypass put in here and they were going to rip down these houses and they were going to run a road through. So of course, I've got a little bit of a news clip. So I'll, I'll show you all that one. Just a minute. In letters six feet high. For people living here at Furnace Cottages in Findham, this is the only way they feel they can be heard. Their fears that the proposed Isham bypass will blight their homes and devastate the surrounding countryside. We are extremely angry. Uh -huh. uh, we feel we've been totally disenfranchised from all of the process leading up to where we are right now. Uh, route 5 is totally the wrong route. There are currently three routes suggested for the bypass. The most likely to be chosen, they fear, is the so-called Route 5, which would pass within yards of their homes. These campaigners want planners to consider alternatives Correctly. which avoid oh. Furnace Lane altogether. And they say today's action is just the beginning. Crazy, right? I'm 20 years down the line, 24 years down the line, and now they're thinking of putting in an ocean bypass again. But they're going to do it up in Little Harridan. So Little Harridan, I want to know your thoughts on that before I go filming up there because I've been trying to get it right in my head. But I want to go film it. So give me some ideas, let me know your thoughts and I'll make a video out of it. But yeah, beautiful, right? Of course as well, Furnace Lane is where I used to work. On my dinner break, I used to come down to this lovely little spot because right next to the train line, you can get up nice and close to watch the train. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, would you look at that? That's a nice one. Cool. Look at that. Don't mind if I do. Let's go watch the train. So here she goes. Ha, awesome. And of course, when you look further down there, that is where you would find Findon Station. But that's at the other end of Furnish Lane. So, Let's go through and see if we can find ourselves some relics. <laughs> and this building here has a big bit of interest, right? After the furnaces were here and they finished doing the smelting, I think they moved the whole process over to Corby. And once that had shut down, the place then turned into a pottery yard on one side. But then on the other side, I think it was Excelsior uh, Wagon Works took over. 
and this is their shed. So a lot of the little wagons that used to get repaired down here were fixed up in here. And my granddad down in Cornwall in 1972 had to bring my mum's whole family up to Wellingborough because there was no work down there. And since my granddad was an expert, skilled welder, he, he was, he, I don't know, it was something expertise that he was good at. Um, <laughs> he ended up coming to Wellingborough to work in one of these wagon works. And it's one of two places. One of them is here, and the other one is down by Shell Garage Bridge, where a lot of us used to ride our motorbikes, and it's called the Sands. So, it could be either or. His name was Edward Barter. So if any of you lot who see the video know of Edward Barter, big Cornishman, and please let me know. And right here, you've got that telltale sign of an engine shed. You've got that typical brick rounded top with a square window that's been bricked up. But it's a telltale sign of the railways. I love it. And all the way along, look. What's this as well? Lord knows what this is, but it's a part of the concrete looking stuff. And look at the reinforcement in here. Lord knows what that is. But they're all railway pins, aren't they? Yeah, strange. Of course, it's had some repairs, or maybe even extended at some point, like there. Sorry for the wind, it started picking up. I think there's a storm brewing in from Kettering somewhere. So, very sorry, but not sorry. Can't be helped. I'm out here enjoying my life. Uh, right, I better give him a call first, don't I? A few moments later. Right, here we go then. Now everyone's going on break and it's all quiet. So this is Midland Pampit Shed. So um, before we go have a look at the shed, take note of the rails. We've got rails. Uh, of course, this is Midland Palace. So big shout out to Steve Bailey, Kev Bailey, Kieran Bailey, um, everybody else that works. I love you all. Right, so, see the rails come up here. And they curve. So, and I don't know what these are here, but it definitely looks like, I don't know, it could have been a weighing machine. It could have been anything, I have not a clue. So if any of you actually know what these are, please come through and let me know, because there's another one at the back as well. Amazing, isn't it? But of course then you've got these rails here. Look at these. And of course then it goes through to next door, which is Fenton's and Bell's Trailers. And there's a little bit in Bell's Trailers, but I think we might have to give that a miss if I can't see that there's somebody there. Oh yeah, look, look, there's another one up there concrete bit the rails they come along here doo, doo, doo. and they come in through the shed <laughs> I used to do pallets in this bit big shout out to Emmy Emria agency as well what a legend and of course then it comes out here and this this here has only been concreted in in the last little while because it was causing the forklifts to dip. But this here is the last little bit of the turnstile where they used to turn the trucks round to then be able to push it into the shed. So, it's had quick dirt, right? And of course, it's had a lot of more. It's had a lot of um, renovation done to it to bring it up to modern use. But still, that wall is the original, where you've got the pillars and you can still see the window arches in there. 
Right, big shout out to Stefan and big shout out to Emil, my favourite Romanians. So yeah, that pretty much stops there. It does go into the older shed. And if I remember rightly, there wasn't too much in the back end of that shed. But there was a little something just in the main shed here. So to imagine that this wagon works, we've seen so many wagon repairs in a day. Mental. Ah, there it is. You see the shed? So I'm pretty sure and that's part of the original wagon works that was here. Proper engine shed skylights look. Absolutely amazing. And over here on this wall, I don't want to get too close to machines because these are deadly mill machinery. But you can just see that arch right there. Absolutely amazing. It's amazing what you learn, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. And there's three more windows as well. So it's a beautiful. So big thank you to Midland Palettes for letting me have a quick look about on that one. Um, I, I know times are hard with all the regulations. Lee! Hey! <laughs> Ah, rose hips. Do you know about rose hips? I mean, these ones are very close to the road. They're not pretty good yet, but if you um, open that up, now you have to be a little bit careful. Da -da -da. But you see the fibers in there, you got to get rid of them hairs, but that shell that's left out of it, <laughs> tastes a little bit like peppers. It's awesome. Anyway, so it did come through Fenton's yard, but I really don't think there's much actually in Fenton's because I've had it tarmac, you see. But the way that railway went across, it did kind of curve. And of course this is Brian Martin's pallet yard, where I also worked for X amount of years because I, I, I loved it. I just, something about pallets and wood, innit? So then right in the middle of their yard is where the furnaces used to stand. So before Excelsior was here, and they were smelting all the iron, it was brought down to this area in the back here. Brian Martins. And I did love working there. God. And the other one of interest is Bell's Trailer's Yard. Now, it's been a little while since I've been here, but I'm pretty sure this asbestos building here is part of the old works as well. That's good timing. Not bad at all. So when you look on the old maps, this shed is quite late. So more than likely that was for the wagon works that was here, right? But just probably in line here, the railway used to cross over and head straight to the land. So yeah, these little sheds here, I reckon they were part of the wagon works more than they were to do with the furnace. So, cool. Right, now there is a little something else I want to have a look at down here, because the last time I came, there were some bomb bomber regiment numbers on some stones part of this old stone yard. 366th. Big shout out to the bomber regiment guy who uh, pointed that one out for us. Cool. Now, there's a couple more little bits up here, but I also saw a report that on Furnace Lane, where the network rail were, had their little railway hub, where they were electrifying and upgrading the East Midlands Railway, it left a bit of a a sore spot really with the people because there were some beautiful ponds down there and of course the Victorian tip so of course they completely decimated the area but then after a lot of lobbying and a lot of people putting their thoughts forward 
the locals have managed to convince Network Rail to turn it back to exactly how it used to be. Right, here we are. Oh wow, all the tarmac's gone. All the gravel. Oh wow. Of course when they came in and did what they did, they destroyed two ponds, which the locals were quite annoyed about to be fair. And no humans will ever be allowed to walk in here. It will remain fenced off. They haven't really done much progression. They've just ch chipped out the land, I suppose. They're just going to wait for it to fill back in, I suppose, are you? See what it's like after the rains, I suppose. But yeah, no, that's... um. Yeah, not bad, actually. Cleaned it up. I mean, it was a white right state. So even as they've done that now, it looks pretty better than it was. Because it was just like this. It was horrible. And look at this stuff. It was all through there. I mean, only right, you should put it back to how it was. Creation, there you go. This notice is hereby given, blah, blah, blah. Creation of a great crested newt habitat, including ponds and earth banks. Great crested newt habitat. So you've come in knowing that there was great crested newts here already and you destroyed it. And now you're trying to make up for it by doing that. That's just another thing saying that these big companies can come in and do what the hell they want. It doesn't matter about uh, whether you own a place because the statutory order can come in and take away your hard earned money or your hard earned land you've been saving up all your life for. Or there could be preservations on places like the lake over Els Barton, which Hanson are filling in. And you've got network rail that'll come in and don't care about newts and they'll just rip across the land. Only right you should bring it back to this state. So don't go on praising like, oh, you need praise for something. Because really, you're only, try, you're only kind of trying to repair. It will never be as good as what it originally was. Never forget that. Fair play, but there's my thoughts. I'll leave it with you. Anyway, this is the old pump station. And it's had a lot of renovation done to it. And if you have a look at the pump here, look. I mean, it's still got the old handle on it. I mean, it's all seized, but you've still got the bolts there. It's absolutely amazing. So lucky for us, the gentleman who was renovating the old pump house is showing me around. And of course, there's quite a lot I can't really show you because he's renovating, but I can show you a couple of these little bits here. So of course, this is some of the original pumpings. The dry well area. That's when the pool was drained. And then they managed to get the digger right in here, look. That's amazing. And it, you see the pipe there? And that is now upside down for what it used to be. It used to be the other way. And it used to suck up the effluent to mix into the pipes. But this is sewage treatment works. And it is just starting to rain, I'm afraid. But yeah, look, Birmingham. Tanish Birmingham. I mean, look at that. What's this? Ham and Baker, Westminster, Southwest. That's awesome. They were actually underground in the tanks, underwater, and the gentleman didn't realize until he got the water out and there they were. And they got the electric motors down on the right. Look. That is something. So to bring all that down from, from downstairs and then put that as a main feature to the building, that's, that's some artwork. This is day one, right? And down here you would have had the pumps and each pump had one of these electrical units to it. So six. But yeah, that's day one. That's awesome. Wow, and that's what it was like, look. And the gentleman saying, this is the original part of the pump house. And when he first got it, it was in such a bad state, a real bad state. 
And of course, down here were two tanks. So one would have been the sewage and then the other one would have been effluent. So I do believe he's going to take me down in a moment and have a look. So Appreciate what these used to be down here, the old holding tanks. Yeah. Down where the old tanks used to be, it does go further, but it's like a TARDIS. gentleman saying this is the original floor level but this is the original thickness of the wall I mean look at that and for each time it come down it stepped out a little bit to compensate for the pressure that's mental um, the gentleman also mentioned that there were filter ponds on the other side of the Midland Railway and there was a story of a gentleman of when they were cleaning the filter ponds it used to leave like an oil bit on the top and what happened is he'd ask the, ask the authorities what to do and they said, I'll oh, just put a match to it, it'll burn off. So of course he did that and, and devastating. But yeah, this gentleman, I've, I've caught him at just that right time. This is absolutely amazing. He's making a big pond here and he's using the old pump wheels, uh, the old um, turning bits for the gates. And he's turning it all into a proper pond. So, he has invited me back to have a look once all this is done, but I'm just glad I managed to stop and just say hello. Do you mind if I film them pumps a minute? <laughs> the owner wouldn't mind. Oh, I am the owner, he says. Oh, what a journey. Beautiful. Just while we're in the workshop, it's awesome. and it's a little further away from the actual pump house, where you used to have the viaduct channels. Of course, these are the viaducts that used to run the water from the uh, from the, the workshop and bring them this way to the tanks where you had these. And these are the penstock doors. It's awesome, right? And right here used to be the um, debris wheel. And of course, up to that. That's awesome. Still left in there. Right, so this bit here is where it actually entered, so the sewage, and there's two pipes here, and one is a new one that has been run alongside the old one. And if you know down at the cotch where I've showed you the, the tall standing kind of, I thought they were capped wells, but they're not. This is the actual pipeline, and it runs all the way down to Broadholm in Earthlinborough, which is the, the sewage treatment works. So this is coming from Ketrin, picking up Finden, and everywhere else, including Wellingborough. But, what would happen is it come off here in two viaducts. Of course, again, you would have had um, a couple more sluice gates, which you would have been able to open. Um, and then it would come into this building here and then start its journey in through the sewage work. All started right here. And you have got this similar thing down Stanton Cross. I'll see if I can put up a little picture of it. But this actual thing is down there. And whenever you go past, it absolutely reeks. And I don't think Broadholm can handle all the sewage that's going to be going there soon. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, that's amazing. I better continue on my journey. So thank you to the gentleman for letting me see this one. Uh, it's absolutely amazing learning about this pump house. And I'm sure when the, when the project is fully done, I'll be back to uh, have another little look. So, uh, yeah, that's enough annoying this gentleman. I'll go back out on the road and we'll see if we can see the old station site. Cool. So what I'm going to do now... I want to walk up to the railway bridge and I want to see the site of Findon Station because talking to the guy who's renovating the pump house he mentions that TSR plastics over the other side used to be part of the furnaces as well so yeah restoring it back to how it was no praise needed Put it back how you found it. <laughs> but let's praise you. <laughs> so quick look, eh? So there you go. And that is the site of the old station. Let's see if we can find some pictures for you. And I am sorry about the wind. 
Ugh. One more thing, because that gentleman also mentioned that to do with the pump house used to have filter beds. And I don't know if you remember in the Sywell Country Park video, the water used to enter these filtration beds where you'd have loads of reed plants naturally filtering the, uh, the water because of the, the bacteria that's on it. And where you saw the pictures with the fire, the gentleman mentions that just on this side of the tracks, there's a road which used to lead down to the effluent tanks. Should we have a look? Oh, it's all boated up. Anyway, but this here is the old road. And of course I'm not allowed in there. But what I can do is I can try and see if... Uh, no, I'm not going to send the drone up, it's just not right. There's cows, there's sheep, it's close to a main line and close to a road. So what I'll do is I'll show you on Google Maps. Pow! Yeah, now nah, you guessed it. There was two parts to this place. That's absolutely amazing. The things I learn about this find and furnace lane is absolutely incredible. And of course I did miss one little thing out and there was another tram line an old railway that used to run from the top of Station Road it used to go down past BT's old farm and down to the old mill pond and go round the back and enter Brian Martin's pallet yard from the back end. So I've got a couple of videos of that I'll show you them and I'll link the actual video of that up there because I actually found an old railway tunnel under the road which is also an epic explore. So what turned out to be me just having a look at Furnace Lane, I got to look a bit more in depth to Furnace Lane. And hopefully by the time it comes around to next year, another year on and I come to do the video once again, I would have gained more knowledge from you beautiful lot. So on that crazy note, if you like the video, then hit that like and subscribe button for me. And then check out a couple of videos right here. Check out the playlists. Give it a good old thumbs up if you feel like it. And if you can, subscribe. But if you can't, then don't bloody worry about it. Sit back and enjoy. Peace, love and light. With a whole heap of unity. <laughs> See you again soon.